it's been a while indeed, but welcome back to The Big Project. This is the series where we work on improving some of those high-quality pre-made lots from good old Maxis. And we're here in Brindleton Bay for this episode for some fun with the felines. Do dogs count as felines? Let's not discriminate. Yes, the current pet hospital needs some changing. Not just the build, but that name as well. The current iteration of the vet clinic works, I guess, but it's nothing really special. So I want to give Rindleton Bay a vet clinic it can be truly proud of. I'm hoping we can integrate a bit more nature, definitely never done that before, and public spaces on top of just being a vet clinic. Okay, time is precious, but it's also a herb, so let's jump right into working this out. Welcome to the canvas, that is clearly the wrong aspect ratio. So I tried out the idea for this build a year or so ago, because I'm the best at following through on commitments. The idea for this build was to have a concept of a vet in the park. So equal parts paradise of leaves, equal part paradise of rabies. The trouble is, with any multi-purpose build in Sims, is that Maxis has been really generous with lot sizes, and by generous I mean they are tiny. And on top of that, I also wanted to see if we could come up with something that was more uniquely styled than what every Everyone else has already done. With this first concept, I took pretty dramatic geometric lines to create some facades, throwing some lovely greenery over the top, and stretching the park all the way underground. As you'll see in a bit, this excessive slant leading to the underground park came back to haunt us, but I would say I was pretty happy with this design. The real test will be how this looks like in the game. So off we pop to the lovely fourth iteration of The Sims for the first iteration of our build. So, translating our design into the game here brought up a few issues. As you can see, that curved front looks pretty tragic once you bring it into the game, kind of why I tend to stick to flat roofs. Our slanted hill also went horribly wrong because, fun fact, you can't build roofs in basements. But besides the few issues we had, I'm actually pretty impressed with how this has turned out. We're gonna have the ugly vet facilities underground anyway, so this structure is really more an opportunity for aesthetics more than anything. Okay, here's what I'll change. Instead of having a giant hillside, I'm gonna try a stacked wall approach. Probably include some vertical greenery. Again, brand new concept. Flatten the curve, straighten the slant, and everything else should come into place. Now that we've got a better direction, let me get to work and do up the final structure. And welcome to the brand new Brindleton Pet Wellness Center, a sanctuary of health for your pets hidden within a community park. Good news, the hill is alive with the sound of dogs barking. It now forms the front facade of the center, which ties in with the natural elements found elsewhere. We also stuck with the open concept, with different wall treatments and elements to maximize nature entering the interior. By the way, the garden centers of Brindleton are now pretty empty, and this is why. We've draped the building with a heaping of greenery, vertical, horizontal, diagonal, you name it. The only thing greener than this is Kermit the Frog. Only when you start heading underground do you find the vet clinic, but first remember to stop for your afternoon cuppa. Okay, the same green elements have been brought indoors as well, with wooden wall coverings, indoor green spaces, and hopefully an overall airy feel to the space. Let's head on over to the main area, where you'll find yourself in a sunken underground park. An oasis of nature combined with play areas for your pets. Also some seating in case you're lacking a sunburn. More seating, and more seating. Back indoors now and we have the vet clinic split into two floors. The upper basement for general consultation. This one's for you if your pet is having a runny nose, or you just want someone else to do the dirty work of washing them up. Waiting areas, because... Yes. And downstairs you'll find more waiting areas, now with a bookshelf. Surgery rooms. And classrooms, where you can learn what not to do if your pet bites your third toe. Finally, another play area with skylights. Less park-like, but at this point it's a compromise. And that pretty much wraps it up. I know this was a quick tour, so if you want to explore this build at your own pace, it is up on the gallery. And fun fact, no CC required, the link to this build is in the description below. Hopefully you enjoyed this little project in your own gameplay, please tell me if there's something broken because I expect there to be problems, but otherwise that will do it for this episode. Very importantly everyone, make sure to pet your pets every Thursday, and until the next one, thank you very much for watching.